ready. Ready, March? Good morning, everybody. Please stand and join us as we begin our worship. And good morning. Your love is amazing, steady and unchanging. Your love is a mountain, firm beneath my feet. Your love is a mystery, how you gently lift me. When I am surrounded, your love carries me. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Your love makes me sing. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Your love makes me sing. Your love is surprising. I can feel it rising. All this joy that's growing deep inside of me. Every time I see you, all your goodness shines through. And I feel this God's song rising up in me. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Your love makes me sing. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Your love makes me sing. Your love is amazing, steady and unchanging. Your love is a mountain, firm beneath my feet. Your love is a mystery, how you gently lift me. When I am surrounded, your love carries me. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Your love makes me sing Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah Your love makes me sing Good morning and welcome to Discovery Church we're so happy you're with us this morning to worship God together with people who love him. We have so many exciting things going on. Um, school starts tomorrow, so uh, please be careful out there. There'll be lots of little people standing near the road in total darkness in some cases. Um, so do be aware of that. Um, we have two mission projects running simultaneously right now. Um, we're finishing up Water for Tanzania. So the big blue bucket is out in the lobby, um, or you can put your offering for Water for Tanzania in the offering plate, however you'd like to do it. Um, we're also continuing um, to bring in items for our preschool. Um, there is a flyer on the back table with a QR code you can scan. It takes you right to the Amazon wish list. Um, so it can't get easier than that. Um, if you'd like to literally bring in items, there is a list in the bulletin and on the bulletin board out in the lobby. Um, do remember our preschool when you're walking through Walmart and you see the 39-cent glue sticks. Uh, we're going to need lots of those this year. Um, are there any other announcements? All right, let's pass the peace of Christ.
us as we continue in worship. For I spoke a word, you were singing over me. You have been so, so good to me. For I took a breath, you breathed your life in me. been so, so kind to me. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. Oh, it chases me down, fights till I'm found, leaves the 99. I couldn't earn it, I don't deserve it. Still you give yourself away Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God yeah. When I was your foe Still your love fought for me You have been so, so good to me and I felt no worth You paid it all for me You have been so, so kind to me Overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God Oh, it chases me down, fights till I'm found, leaves the 99 I couldn't earn it, I don't deserve it Still you give yourself away Overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God climb up coming after me no wall you won't kick down lie you won't tear down coming after me no shadow you won't light up mountain you won't climb up coming after me no wall you won't kick down lie you won't tear down Coming after me No shadow you won't light up Mountain you won't climb up Coming after me No wall you won't kick down Lie you won't tear down Coming after me Oh, the overwhelming Never-ending Reckless love of God Oh, it chases me down, fights till I'm found, leaves the 99. I couldn't earn it, I don't deserve it, still you give yourself away. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God, yeah.
I can face tomorrow because He lives. All fear is gone because I know He holds the future and life is worth the living just because He lives. How sweet to hold a newborn baby and feel the pride and joy he gives. But greater still, the calm assurance this child can face on certain days because Christ lives. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds the future. And life is worth the living just because he lives. And then one day, I'll cross that river, I'll fight life's fine, no war with pain. And then as death gives way to victory, I'll see the light of glory and I'll know He reigns. Because He lives, I can face tomorrow. Because He lives, all fear is gone. Because I know He holds the future. And life is worth the living just because He lives. And life is worth the living just because He lives. It's time once again for the prayers of the people. And we like to begin that time with praises to God for all the things we've seen him at work doing in us and through us and for us. I want to praise God for the life of Neil Brantley Sr. And for the way that he taught his children to pray. I can't begin to tell you the praying I have heard this week. I'm so inspired by how they have just praised God through this whole thing. For those of you who don't know, we lost James's dad this week. But he is in a much better place. Um, so we're praising God for his life and for all the prayers. And we thank y'all so much the way that you have just poured out prayers on us. Um, it means a whole lot. It really does. Um, so please continue to pray for our family. And know that we appreciate you so much. Who else has a praise they'd like to offer? Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. Um, Mr. Brantley's Celebration of Life will be on Saturday, September 7th. Um, do we have a time yet? At 1 o'clock? At 1 o'clock. And it will be here at Discovery Church. Um, so thank you for welcoming the family for, for that event. We appreciate it so much.
Who else has a praise they'd like to share? I want to praise God for a safe first week in college for Emily. And uh, she had three days of class, and then we brought her back for some family events. But, um, but yeah, we've been blessed. All right, let's turn to the prayer side. Who needs prayer this week? Yes, ma'am. Great. We will lift up Michael. Yes, ma'am. Okay. We will lift up those unspoken prayers. Yes, ma'am. And their parents. It occurred to me that, you know, I work in kindergarten at Van Dorf Springs Elementary in Wake County. It occurred to me that the feelings I've had all week because Emily's not there, there will be a lot of people having those feelings in a couple weeks when the kindergartners start to school. So I'm feeling their pain this year in a new way. We will remember all of those. And bus drivers, please remember bus drivers. That is the hardest job on the planet. Yes, ma'am. Right, so we'll remember Brooke Williams and her family in the loss of her child. Who else has a question? Yeah. All right, we'll remember Miss Peggy and Casey. While we're at it, we'll lift up Molly Brantley, who was student teaching at Clayton High School. We'll just pray for you to be able to find your way around that labyrinth. Who else has a prayer request? All right. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we come to you this morning excited to be in your house happy to be together with people who love you, so amazed at all the things that you're at work doing, Lord, and so thankful for the opportunity to participate. We know that you don't need us to help with your work, Lord, but we sure are glad that you include us. Father, we have so many things to praise you for, beginning with Neil Brantley Sr. Thank you for everything that he was to us. Thank you for his example. Thank you for his prayer life. Thank you for his Bible understanding and his willingness to share that. Lord, we also lift up Lynn's brother, and we're so happy, Father, that his surgery went so well and was able to be done so quickly. We thank you, Lord, and we give you the glory. Lord, we thank you for a good first week at college for Emily. Thank you for her roommates for her safe travels there and back. We ask for your continued guidance and protection for her. Lord, we have so many things that we're praying about. Lord, I want to lift up water for Tanzania and ask you to please continue to bless that ministry so that as many people as possible can have clean drinking water and as many children as possible can return to school. Father, we also want to lift up our preschool and ask you to bless it this year. We pray for your protection over the teachers and the students and the administrators. We pray for your protection over the families. Lord, we ask for your blessings of wisdom for our staff. We pray, Lord, for a healthy year for all. 
and we thank you, Father, for the beautiful thing that preschool is. Lord, we want to lift up the family of Neil Brantley Sr. and ask for your continued guidance and protection for them. We pray for your strength and for your peace, Lord, as we move into the public side of grief. Lord, for all those who mourn, hold them close to your heart. Father, we also want to lift up Lynn's brother and ask for your blessings of healing on him as he goes forward with his PET scan and radiation to come. We pray, Lord, that the work you began in him will be completed and that he can be told he is cancer-free once again. And we give you all the glory, Lord, for what you're about to do. Thank you. Lord, we continue to lift up Michael Hodges and pray that this will be the week that he gets to go home. And we thank you for his, his life's ministry, Lord. And we pray that he'll have the strength to get back to all the things that he loves to do. Father, we lift up the unspoken requests. You know what they are, Lord, before we even do. And we thank you, Father, that you always hear us when we pray. Lord, for the beginning of school, we pray your blessings of wisdom and help and protection on our teachers and administrators, on our parents. And Lord, we pray your protection for our children. Help them to have a productive year, Lord. Help them to experience the joy of learning every day. We ask for your blessings on all staff, including the bus drivers, the custodians, and everyone else who makes school possible. Thank you, Lord. Lord, for Brooke Williams and her family, we lift them up to you, Lord. We ask for your peace. We ask for your endurance. We ask for your very closeness for her family and the loss of her mother, especially as they go forward with their public side of grief. Help them to know, Lord, that you are there. Lord, we continue to lift up Miss Peggy and thank you for all the progress that she's made. We give you all the glory. We thank you for Casey's new job, Lord, and we ask for your blessings on her as she goes forward as a new teacher. Help her to be patient with herself and her students. Keep her safe, Lord. Lord, we lift up Molly as she begins her student teaching. We pray that the influence of all around her will help her to grow. And we pray, Lord, for protection, safety, and health for her as well. Father, there are so many who we could lift up to you this morning. We all know someone who needs you. And so for all those who go through life without knowing you, we pray for an opportunity. Just a small opportunity, Lord, to share what you mean to us, what you've done for us, who you are to us. Give us a chance, Lord, and we will be faithful. Father, when Jesus was here and his disciples asked him how they should pray, this is the prayer that he shared with them, and we say it together now. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I'm getting organized here. The children's message. So this morning, I was thinking about pancakes. I do that some days. This particular morning, I was thinking about the International House of Pancakes. Anybody else like that place? IHOP. Yes. So when you go to IHOP, you expect that there will be pancakes, right? 
When you go to Kentucky Fried Chicken, you expect that there will be fried chicken. But sometimes you go and they say, oh, we don't have any chicken. I'm not sure why they don't close the doors in any case. When you go to the house of pants, do you expect to find shirts and blouses? Or do you expect to find pants? If you went to the International House of Earrings, would you necessarily expect to find something other than earrings? You at least would expect earrings, right? So why is it that when we go to the house of prayer, sometimes we don't find prayer? Jesus was puzzled by that. He went to the temple one day, and what he found were a lot of people changing money, buying and selling things, and nobody was praying. And he was very concerned. He said, this place is my father's house, and it's supposed to be a house of prayer, and you've turned it into a den of thieves. Pretty harsh. But he was fully disgusted with what he found. There's a story where Jesus upon seeing what the outer courts of the temple had turned into, a marketplace, he braided a cord and put it, made it into a whip and used it to drive out those people who were changing money because he didn't think they understood what was supposed to be happening there. Can you imagine? At the house of prayer, there should be prayer. And not just one but lots, and not just one person, but all the people, all the time, praying, praying, praying. Jesus made it possible for us to go to God in prayer anytime we want. We can talk to God all day long. In fact, some people do. Sometimes you think you hear somebody talking to themselves, but really they're praying out loud with their eyes open, right? And that's perfectly okay. God loves that. So let's pray and thank God for the opportunity to go to him anytime, anywhere, all day long. Dear Jesus, thank you for the opportunity to pray. Thank you for making a way for us to talk directly to the creator of the universe anytime we want. Thank you for giving us the words to say when we don't have the words. Thank you for sending us the Holy Spirit to interpret what it is we're trying to say when we can't even say the words. We love you, Jesus. It's in your precious and holy name that we pray, and all God's children say, Amen. Today's scripture comes from the book of John. I feel like I'm too loud. Am I too loud? Okay. It comes from the book of John, chapter 6. Chapter 6 of John is loaded, absolutely loaded. It's a long chapter, and it is just chock full. So this will be verses 56 through 69 from the New Living Translation. Anyone who eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in him. I live because of the living Father who sent me. In the same way, anyone who feeds on me will live because of me. I am the true bread that came down from heaven. Anyone who eats this bread will not die as your ancestors did, even though they ate the manna, but will live forever. He said these things, while he was teaching in the synagogue in Capernaum, many disciples desert Jesus. Many of his disciples said, this is very hard to understand. How can anyone accept it? Jesus was aware that his disciples were complaining. So he said to them, does this offend you? Then what will you think if you see the Son of Man ascend to heaven again? The Spirit alone gives eternal life. Human effort accomplishes nothing. And the very words I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But some of you do not believe me, for Jesus knew from the beginning which ones didn't believe 
and he knew who would betray him. Then he said, That is why I said that people can't come to me unless the Father gives them to me. At this point, many of his disciples turned away and deserted him. Then Jesus turned to the twelve and asked, Are you also going to leave? Simon Peter replied, Lord, to whom would we go? You have the words that give eternal life. We believe and we know you are the Holy One of God. This is the word of the Lord. These are hard sayings of Jesus. Hard sayings. So let's lay it aside for just a minute and talk about dirt. <clears throat> Jesus very often would tell parables to help people understand some of these hard sayings that he had to give them. And so I wanted to share with you one that I think is very relevant to today's scripture, and that is the parable of the sower. It's in Matthew. If you want to read it later, it's somewhere around Matthew 13, I think. So the parable of the sower goes sort of like this. A farmer was sowing seed, but he had a problem. He had a big problem. He did not have good dirt. Now, those of you who live around here, your yard may look like mine and be all red clay. Anybody else got red clay? Yeah. So when my grandma Hazel, who had the greenest thumb you've ever seen, saw my yard for the first time, we took her over when we were building our house, she goes, hmm. I said, what is it? She said, you have got a long row to hoe with this red heavy mess. And boy, was she right. Absolutely right. Everything has to work hard in clay. And if you want to plant something in it, you got to do a lot of stuff to it. She taught me that if you want a $5 plant to survive in clay, you got to make a $10 hole. And what she meant by that was, you got to dig it in the right place, and you got to make it the right size. And then you got to amend the soil with all the right nutrients and materials and other things. And then once you've done all that, then you can put your plant in it and hope for the best. And so that's what I did. She showed me where to put things. She told me what I should put. She explained all of that to me, and I had been gardening with her my whole life, uh, mostly as her labor. But she started to share the wisdom with me when I had my own yard. And it was amazing how all that work up front really paid off later. Because my neighbors would plant stuff. They'd plant the same thing I did. And mine would come up and thrive. And theirs would come up and die. And come up and die. Over and over. And our next door neighbor said, what are you doing to those? And so I told her about the $10 hole. I said, I don't have good dirt. We had good dirt, but they scraped it all off and put it in the backyard over the septic tank. And then we just had red clay left. So I told her what my grandma told me about how to make a $10 hole. All that being said, to say this, you can't grow a beautiful plant in lousy soil. You can't grow a beautiful plant in not enough sunshine, and you can't grow it without enough water. Hazel understood all of these things, and she tried her best to teach them to me. Now, my yard now doesn't look anything like it did when she was helping me. <laughs> that red clay is tough. So the sower, parable of the sower, you know, Jesus told these parables, these stories, to help people understand his hard sayings. He was trying to teach people that day about the kingdom of God, which is a really hard thing to grasp, right? It's hard to wrap your mind around the idea of the kingdom of God because where is it? We can't see it. What does it look like? How does it work? So he's trying to explain through this parable. So he says this farmer was sowing seed. And as he scattered his seed, some of it fell on the path, the walking path. And that dirt was compacted. Okay, that is not a $10 hole. The seed that fell on the pathway, the birds came and ate it. It never even germinated. No chance right? Nothing from that. So then other seeds fell on rocky soil, right? And they came up quickly because there was soil, but the rocky soil 
but shallow. So they could only have a little bit of a root, and they did fine until there was some adversity, like a drought or hot, hot sun. And as soon as that adversity came, they withered and died. Again, no yield. So then other seeds fell in a thorny area where the thorns were growing pretty thick. They came up too, but not in great numbers because the thorns just choked them out. The thorns used up everything the soil had to give and left nothing for the plants. No yield. No harvest. So then finally, some of the seeds fell on good soil. It found a $10 hole, and it came up, and when the sun beat down, it had deep roots, so it survived. And it had big leaves, so it could take in a lot of sunshine. And it produced a crop that was 100 times, or 60 times, or 30 times what had been sown. That's a good crop. I'll take it. So this is the parable of the sower. And when Jesus finished telling it, the people who were listening were like, what does that have to do with anything? How does that explain the kingdom of God? I don't get it. And they all looked at each other, puzzled, and baffled. And Jesus looked at the 12 and winked. The Bible doesn't say that. That's just me. And he said, I'll explain this to you later. It's not for them. This is meant for you to understand. And it's meant for you to understand as well. So what does it all mean? The seed that fell on the path is like people who hear the gospel and they don't get it and they don't care. The birds come and eat it. That's done. The seed that fell on the rocky soil is like people who hear the gospel but is, and they do well with it in the beginning. They have joy. They receive it joyfully, but as soon as there's some adversity, a little too much sun, a little too hot, not enough water, it withers and dies, and they let it go because it's hard. By the way, nobody ever said the Christian life was easy. There's nothing easy about it. It's simple, but it's not easy. So then the seeds that fell in the thorns are like people who hear the gospel, and they receive it, and they start kind of trying to live it out, but the world just encroaches and encroaches until they give up because it's too hard. But then finally, that seed that falls on the good earth, the good soil, it can make deep roots. It can withstand some adversity because of those deep roots. That's the seed that represents us because we have persevered. And we're going to believe, and we're not going to let go of what we understand. Here's the other thing you need to know about plants. A little bit of adversity is good for them. It forces them to grow deeper roots. If they don't find enough water this deep, guess what? They'll go that deep. And the deeper they go, the harder it is to kill it. Same thing is true of us. The deeper we go with Jesus, the harder it is for this world to choke us out. The harder it is for the adversity to kill us off because we won't let go of what we've learned. Now, remember that $5 plant and a $10 home. Jesus gave all these really hard sayings to the people who were gathered to listen to him. And they had the same reaction as the people here in the parable of the sower. What? what is he talking about eating his flesh? I am not a cannibal. What is he talking about drinking his blood? What? That's disgusting. These people had gathered around him because he fed them. Remember also earlier in chapter 6, he fed the 5,000 men plus women and children with a few fish and a few loaves. They followed the miracle man because their bellies were full. They liked it that way. They were focused on the physical things that Jesus had to offer. They were not hearing the eternal things that he had to offer. They were not hearing the spiritual things that he had to offer. It was all about their belly. And as soon as it got a little bit hard, 
They were like the seeds that fell on the rocky soil. He hit them with a hard saying right between the eyes, and they went, I'm out. I don't get it. No more food? All right, bye. They were done. And the Bible says, literally, many of those learners, that's what disciple means, turned away and walked off and never came back. They missed. So that wink he gave them earlier, he knew that was coming. So once the followers had turned and left, Jesus explained to his disciples what he's talking about. He said, this teaching is for you 12 to understand. I want you to get this. I'm not talking about my body. I'm talking about your eternal salvation. If I don't die and offer you my flesh and my blood as a new covenant, then you can't live. Hear that again. You will live because I'm willing to give up my life. That's what he's trying to explain. And they begin to get it, but not quite. And after everybody leaves, he turns and he looks at them and he says, are y'all going to leave too? And sometimes I read that and I hear, Let me give them an opportunity to prove themselves. And sometimes I read it and I hear a very human, I feel abandoned right now. Are y'all going to leave too? And Peter, don't you love Peter? He drives me crazy, but I do love him. This is what he says. It's one of the most beautiful confessions in the whole Bible. Are you all going to go and leave me too? And Peter says, Lord, to whom would we go? You have the words of eternal life. He's speaking for everybody. Who would we go to? There's nowhere else to go. We're not going anywhere. And then he says, because we have come to believe and we now know that you are the Holy One of Israel. We have come to believe, and now we know that you are the Holy One. Coming to believe is about growing. It's about watching and listening. It's about learning and experiencing. It's about trusting It's about giving. That's what coming to believe means. Those guys didn't start out in the hall of fame for faith. They had very little faith in anything except fishing. But as they watched Jesus and heard from him and saw who he was, demonstrated to them over and over, they came to believe. Now, here's the hope. There are people all around you that you would like to see sitting in these rows every Sunday. There are people who don't know Jesus in your orbit. But there is hope because those guys didn't come to believe right away. It takes time. We got to wear people down with the love of Christ. And that's what Jesus did with them. He loved them and loved them and loved them and was patient with them and continued to teach and reteach and reteach teachers. You know, haven't I told you this 500 times, teachers say? Yes. He continued to pour out himself on them until they got it. Now, if they all could have, if the Bible ended right there, it would still work. Because that is a confession of faith that works for everybody. We have come to believe and we now know that you are the Holy One of God. Without a doubt. That kind of conviction is born of experience. Peter knew because he had seen it. He had lived it and he had walked it out with Jesus. This week. Bear with me.
this week, I lost my last earthly daddy. I've only known Mr. Brantley for about 35 years. But he is one of the reasons that I'm standing here. He was one of the first people to sit down with me at a table with a Bible and explain why we believe what we believe. He defended his faith in the kindest and most patient and loving, respectful way of anybody I've ever known. He encouraged me to dig deep beyond the surface faith that I had developed up until then into something with roots. His faith came to him just the way the disciples did. God wore him down until he finally surrendered. And when he surrendered, it was absolutely everything. He gave his whole self to Jesus. Mr. Brantley had deep, deep roots. He told me one time at that same table, because we, we would just sit around and talk about God, about faith, about the Bible. I learned so much about the Bible from him. We were just sitting at that table, and he said, Kimberly, I believe what I've just said to you with all my heart. And even if the people who wrote these words down in this book decide that they got it wrong, I still believe because I know the truth, and I learned it from Jesus. So deep roots, deep roots, unshakable roots. So come drought, come famine, come whatever. His roots were not going to let him down because he was firmly rooted in Jesus. Now, our loss, heaven's gain. When he breathed his last on Wednesday, he opened his eyes wide because there stood Jesus, arms open, just waiting. I can't imagine the joy. And I do picture all my daddies sitting up there talking about us. <laughs> I really do. I just want you to understand that you come to believe. And you're always developing and you're always growing and you're always going deeper. And as long as there's some challenge to prompt it, you'll continue to grow. So let yourself be challenged and grow. $5 plant and $10 coffee. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for this day, Lord. We thank you for the opportunity to share your word. We thank you for your ministry to our hearts through your Holy Spirit. We're amazed, Lord, at the depth of your word at everything that we can learn just from reading. Help us, Lord, to take what we read, to understand it, to apply it the way that you intend. Help us have wisdom to share your word with others. And we pray, Lord, for those opportunities. Thank you, Lord, for your blessings on this church, on these people, on our community. Help us continue to lead it toward you. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. In all God's people say, Amen. Would the ushers come forward to receive the offering? Let's bless the offering. Father God, we thank you for all the many blessings that you've poured out on us. Thank you for the opportunity, Lord, to return some of those gifts to you to grow your kingdom. We pray, Father, that you'll multiply the gifts and that you'll bless the givers. In Jesus' name.
Please stand and join us for our final song. Many of you will remember it from last week. I speak the name of Jesus over you. In your hurting, in your sorrow, I ask my God to move. I speak the name because it's all that I can do. Desperation, I'll seek heaven and pray this for you. I pray for your healing. The circumstances will change. I pray that the fear inside will flee. In Jesus' name, I pray that a breakthrough would happen today. I pray miracles over your life. Jesus name, Jesus name. I speak the name of all authority, declaring blessings, every promise He's faithful to keep. I speak the name no great could ever hold. He is greater, He is stronger, He's the God of possible. I pray for your healing, the circumstances will change. I pray that the fear inside will flee. In Jesus' name, I pray that a breakthrough would happen today. Pray miracles over your life in Jesus' name, Jesus' name. Oh, come believe it, come receive it. Oh, the power of the Spirit is now forever yours. Come believe it. Receive it in the mighty name of Jesus. All things are possible. I pray for your healing. Circumstances would change. I pray that the fear inside would flee in Jesus' name. I pray that a breakthrough would happen today. I pray miracles over your life in Jesus' name. I pray for revival, for restoration of faith. I pray that the dead will come to life in Jesus' name, Jesus' name. Thank you for being here today, for your contributions to our worship. We thank you. <clears throat> I want to let you know that if you ever need more prayer or you need a personal prayer, I'm here. We don't usually leave for a while after church is done. so. Any Sunday you need to meet me down here after church, just come on or find me wherever I am. I'll pray with you. I'm always happy to do that. Now let's say our benediction together. Wherever you go, God is sending you. Wherever you are, God has put you there. He has a purpose in your being there. Christ who indwells you has something he wants to do through you where you are. Believe this and go in his grace and love and power. And all God's people say, Amen. Come believe it, come receive it. Oh, the power of the Spirit is now forever yours. Come believe it, come receive it. All 
all things are possible. I pray for your healing. Circumstances would change. I pray that the fear inside would flee in Jesus' name. I pray that a breakthrough would happen today. I pray miracles over your life in Jesus' name. I pray for revival, for restoration of faith. I pray that the dead will come to life in Jesus' name. Jesus' name.